Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. It is Thanksgiving night. I am stuffed. I am about to pop. And I thought I might want to just come and play in the snow for a little bit. Play in the snow, you say? That's right. Let's play in the snow. We're going to design some uh, snowflakes and light burn quick, simple, and I'm going to show you how to design your own unique snowflakes and without having to go out and copy stuff and you have the satisfaction of saying, hey, those are mine. I did that. So stay tuned. Okay, this is going to be a short video. Uh, it's going to be just a real quick, simple how to design snowflakes using some very basic designs and techniques. So let's jump into Lightburn. And we're going to start out with drawing a simple line. So we're going to grab our pencil tool. And if you're not aware of this, you, you left click to start your anchor point, you're drawing a line. But you see that line's a little bit everywhere. And if I was wanting to draw a straight line right down that path, that grid, you know, it's a little bit tricky sometimes. If you hold your shift button, I'm going to zoom out again. Right now, I'm not holding shift. Now I'm going to hold my shift button and start moving this around. See that jumps now. It jumps from 90 vertical, 45 well, I guess that wasn't 45. But, oh, and again, 90. Yeah. So that's 45 degree angle, 90, 90, 45. And that's by holding the shift key. So if you want to draw a perfectly straight line, start an anchor point, hold and shift, draw your line out, and it's going to be a perfectly straight line. Right click again, or left click again to put your next anchor point, and right click to stop. And you have a perfectly straight line. Now, uh, there are a couple different ways you could do this. You could uh, draw some additional lines here. But I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm not going to draw lines. I'm going to use text. So I'm using text, and I'm using Arial Rounded MT Bold. And I'm just going to come right up here toward the top, and I'm going to uh, type the letter V, lowercase v. And that's actually a little large for what I want, but I'm going to say OK. And while that's selected, I'm going to make it a little smaller. And it's this is just from my experience on what I know I'm going to look like. I'm not using any particular dimensions. And, you'll, and as you do this yourself, you'll learn, and, and it's just trial and error. But here we go. So there, and now I'm going to... Um, I'm just going to duplicate that. I'm going to say Control D, move it down a little bit. I'm going to do it one more time. Hit Control D, move it down, and one more time. Control D. Okay, now this is something I'm learning to use. You see, I've just uh created four individual text characters there and, and that's different than going v enter v enter because then that would just be one continuous text and we don't want that so i did one v and then duplicated it and now i'm going to increase each one of those incrementally uh and let's just uh, in fact let's try doing uh 75 percent uh 175 percent so I've got this V selected. I've got the dimensions locked, the aspect ratio locked. And I'm just going to come up here to the percentage on the width and tell it um, 175%. So that's going to be 100% of the original size plus 75% more. Let's see how that's going to look like. Yeah, that might be a little bit big. Let's do 150. All right, 150%. And I'm going to do this one. 
at 200%. So it'll be 50% larger than the one I just did. So 200. And then lastly, uh, 250. Got to go into the percentage. 250%. Okay. That's going to... I'm not done this. I'm just doing this up on the cuff. So off the cuff. All right. Now, I'm going to select e all of those, and let's see what happens when we use this. Uh, now, that tool there spaces them out uh, vertically on center, uh, but that's not enough space for what I want to do. So, I'm going to do uh, and this is going to be way big, and you're going to shrink it down here in a minute. But I'm just trying to get the shapes that I'm after. Okay. So now that I've got those in the right proportions, they're too big, I'm going to shrink them, select them all, shrink them all down. It's about like so. Now, with those selected, I'm holding my shift key, select my line, and tell it to go align on its vertical centers. And there we go. Now, I'm going to select all those again. I'm going to go in a little tight, and I want to get that top V right about there, right in where that line is in the middle of that V. All right, now, uh, select all of that. Control D, duplicate all that. Hit the mirror button up there and flipped it all. Now I'll just use my arrow down button, bring it all down. I'm going to zoom in here. And that looks good. I got that right there in the middle of that V. It's good. It's good. Now select just the line only. Go to your offset tool. And we're going to do an offset. Uh, and we want it round, and that's way too big. want to have the thickness of that outline, or that offset of that line, about the same thickness of the largest V. And so I'm just going to, that's still too big, just playing with these till we get where I want it to be. And come on, get your fingers right in space. Uh... Let's do that. 0.13. Okay. And again, like I said, the values that I'm using are completely arbitrary. They're irrelevant. It's about what looks good. And you'll see why what looks good here in just a second. Oh, now undo that so you can see what I selected there. So I'm offsetting that line and I'm doing uh, delete original objects using a round offset so that I don't have up here you see that's a corner I don't want those corners I want it rounded and I want to delete the original objects and say okay and now we're left with that so now I'm gonna select all of it and use my weld function weld all that together now I use my circular array tool and there's one snowflake that looks pretty good. So, okay. Select all of it and weld it, and let's see what that looks like. That's pretty cool. I like that. But I want to do a different design. Uh, I want to have those interlocking even more. Uh, but let's just set this off to the side. Come back to our work page. Again, real, real fast and quick. Hold my shift key, start an anchor point, hit a button, right click to stop the line. Now I'm going to use my text tool and I'm going to use the letter V and say OK and select that. And then let's duplicate, Control D, move it. This time I'm going to do three instead of four, Control D. All right, so now we're using three of them and let's do. Um, Let's do uh, what's 175% look like. Is it going to be too big? 
No, we'll make that work, I think. And this one we're going to do even bigger. We're going to say 225%. And now what I'm going to do is, uh, first I'm going to space them out. And so let's try that spacing vertically again. Select them all. Come over here. Distribute selected objects vertically on center. Gunfire. Always love my neighborhood. All right. Nope, that didn't work for me there. Let's take that back up to there like so uh let's let's try that but what i want to do this v is i want to stretch it out so i'll come here to the side and i'm going to hold my control button and drag this out until it gets a little wider uh and now i'm going to bring this one down a bit and bring this one up a bit Got to get it on the top in the middle of that line. And now we'll center them all up again. Well. Okay, that's centered. All right. Now, uh, let's duplicate them, select them all, Control D. Mirror them, float them down here. Select the line offset and delete original. OK. Weld it all together. And this time offset. Three copies, okay. Weld them all together. There you go. So by making that lower, the last one bigger, longer, and stretching it out, it gives it an opportunity for them to overlap each other as you rotate them, creating that interlocked crystal and the different snowflake. Uh, and the larger openings in the middle. Because when you draw this one, you put these down to size that, that you're going to use them as individual snowflakes. Control and shrink it in, and now she's what? An inch and a half by inch and a half. That means that if you were to look at those individual little bitty pieces, if you're doing carvings, look how small that is up here. 0 .03, 0 .04, 14, four hundredths of an inch. That's too small. So that's doing it whenever she's a overall a inch and a half snowflake. So if we went back to this one and compared this one in the same and put it at an inch and a half. And now look at those individual pieces. Uh... 16 hundredths and 10 hundredths. Uh, so those those are, are more usable. So there's, and for those are English and everybody else in the world except for the Americans, that's four millimeters and two and a half millimeters. So those are usable cutouts, even at an inch and a half. So uh, that's why I like to make those other ones bigger. But play with this. Use different letters, try different things, but... Uh, and or different techniques instead of using the V you can actually draw your lines out and then do an offset of the whole thing uh, and then circular array rotate them create more copies in fact let's see this was uh, three copies of that and here's what's really neat we're just gonna keep hitting the undo until I get back to uh, that original singular there we go that piece there it's all welded together now that was three copies, circular array. Let's do more copies. There's five. Weld those together. Now that don't look good at all. That looks like a snowball, not a snow snowflake. That was a deformed snowball, but it's a big old, that don't work. All right, so you can just undo and you can continue to try those patterns It'll probably th with this one three is going to be the better one uh so th that was a quick design of snowflakes so 
Use your imagination. Remember snowflakes are crystals. They're symmetrical. So all you have to do is create one line item. Then rotate it and it's going to form that pattern. So I hope you found this informative. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. This is Steve, Hobo with Wood, and I'm out.